It is oh, now. Be on TV. Yes, you're famous. <laughs> on this episode of Function Beast, we delete my car. <laughs> Sit rep. We got the car to the shop. We didn't film it because it was too cold. But as you can see, this car has been sitting outside for a very long time since the first event of 2018 and she is in deplorable condition. I have let Princess Bubblegum sit in my driveway and rot. <laughs> and it is unfortunate. Look, 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 look at this. Look at the state of the old girl. She had, she had no motor, but still turbocharged. That's important, very important. Always be turbocharged, except for what we're gonna do to it. I mean, look at, look, look at how, this is the filthiest car in all of human existence. And I've, I feel bad about it, I really do. I like this car, the hood is over here, and look at, it's just, it's just unbelievable filth. Look, look at this. It, it's so dirty, it doesn't even wipe off when you rub your finger on it. The old girl. What have I done to you? What have you become? But today we're gonna go get the motor for the car uh, and bring it over here. And, uh, you know, we'll put it in the car and then it'll be a race car again instead of an enormous, very expensive paper. So basically, for this swap, the LS swap, all of this stuff, all of it, all, all of this stuff, this stuff, this stuff, this stuff, it's getting thrown out. Uh, we're not retaining any of the factory electronics, that's all going away. Um, all of the factory fuse boxes and stuff, I have a standalone engine harness and a standalone chassis harness so it's all going to get rewired we're going to throw away the whole interior of the car if you need stuff hit me up um and uh yeah so we'll do that and it'll be great and fun begin by removing the chassis harness with extreme prejudice use any means necessary I expended so much effort one time to make this really nice after I lit it on fire. Remove the radiator overflow tank and fuel pressure regulator. Both of these will be saved and used later. It's a reasonably pointless thing to have at the start, considering you never had any fluid in it Continue to fight with a pile of melted spaghetti. Engine harness. Garbage. Remove the harness pigtails for the headlights and turn signals. You're going to need those later. Continue to try to remove the factory relay boxes. Some violence may be required. Look 
you're having a massacre, my boy. Why is all of this? Why is all of this? thrown away everything that's in the engine bay. Now we're gonna throw away everything that's in here. Start by removing the harnesses and seats. Find confusing buried treasure. So I threw the passenger seat in the garbage. Now I'm gonna throw the back seat in the garbage. It's got a little pull tabs. I don't know if you can see it because it's fucking darker than a black hole in here. Ugh. Oh. No, not my M3. <laughs> so here's the things that I found under the seat of this car. The uh, invitation to clean culture, August 30th, 2015. I'm sure you went to that. Uh, no. <laughs> no? No, I didn't go to that. No? Uh, so the dude who owned this car did? No, I, I owned this car in 2015. Yeah, you were at clean culture in 2015. The uh, Orange County Fairgrounds? No. No, it was at clean culture in 2016 in Pocono. Pocono, yeah. And that's when I got pulled over and harassed. <laughs> oh, that's right. I didn't know that. Uh, when your car was fully legal, and they were like, this car's not registered. And you were like, here's the registration. And they were like, fuck that. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, badge for my old job at the hospital, and it has all of the disaster codes on it. Oh. Uh, we had, it, I worked at um, an assisted living facility, uh, and we had a lot of code browns, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, which is adult patient elopement, because they would forget where they were. So they just peace off the property? Yeah, they would just be like, I don't know where I am, I'm going home. And we're like, oh, no. This place is weird, bye! Yeah, there's a lot of that. They're like, no, dog, you live here. They're like, no, no, I'm calling my son. Then they would just like run away. I don't live here. I have a house with cats still. So I believe it. Uh, pretty much. So I've been throwing away dashboard stuff. This is a dashboard. I didn't film it because it was really annoying to get it out of the car. But this is what the dash bar looks like, the factory dash bar. It's horrifying. This is what life looks like inside one of these. Um, as you can see, I've already started taking away some of the electronics, but literally all you see before you, all of it will go. We'll throw it all away. Um, we're going to retain the factory dash bar because the car is not getting a cage. But I'm going to throw away all of the crap and you get to watch. I've done, I've removed the entire interior of this car with one Phillips head screwdriver, by the way. Evan bought these in 2016 at Acme. Is it through your vintage? Yeah. 
Oh, oh, good news. Best Buy 612-2019. Wow. It tastes like plastic. It tastes fine, honestly. <laughs> it's incredible. Ah. Uh. If I get dysentery tonight, we know what happened. I'm gonna get cholera and double tuberculosis. Double tuberculosis? <laughs> I feel like Frodo Baggins, but instead of saving Middle Earth, I massacred a car. It's finished. It's done. Uh, this is what I would classify as the point of no return. <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's going back for this. Um, I think this car is going to be permanently uncomfortable. It's the absolute devastation. They say when you do a race car conversion that you lose like a lot of the creature comforts of the vehicle, but we have done wonders for passenger side footroom. Look at that, that's incredible. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Time for some suck. Suck. It says don't start your engine for 10 to 15 minutes after applying gunk heavy duty degreaser. Don't think that's gonna be an issue. And thus we wash. Engine bay. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it do look like. Do, I mean don't, do. Yeah, we're gonna be at this for a while. So we power washed the car, and I'm sorry I couldn't really show you the whole thing, it was getting dark, but it was like some high priced filth, like gubernatorial prostitution high priced filth. Head on, apply directly to the firewall. You gotta go, like, you know what I mean, like that. Delicately massage the firewall to allow space for the larger F-body bell housing. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. This is this is the way it looks right now. After his absolutely devastating molestation, that's gonna go on unsolved mysteries <laughs> or the first 48. I mean, I mean it's it's solved. We know we did it. That's a, that's a crime documentary right there. Yes, you crime, but I'm responsible. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing that we have to do for the uh, LSX S13 is hammer out the uh, trans tone. We already did the, uh, the space for the bell housing, but the CD009 transmissions are quite wide uh, in the back. Uh, like where the shifter is. So according to uh, Mr. Collins, who we got the uh, adapter kit from, for the uh, CD, we need to uh, give the ears in which the uh, cross member mounts to a uh, good old whooping, so we're gonna do that. So for this, we need to go from uh, about here up as, as high as we can reasonably go. And from my uh, understanding, it's she a tight fit. So, uh, let's whoop. Yeah, oh yeah. Are, are we there? Yeah. You're at like almost 12. Here. I think you might have to hammer higher up. I think you probably have to flatten this too. You know? See how this is flat here, but when you go across from it, it's like factory width still. Okay. I think you should probably bang it up here. It kind of sucks because. What, what is this? Fire extinguisher? Fire extinguisher. You should uninstall that first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't fing devastate it. Like you don't want to puncture it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I would take these bolts out. Um, chances are, after it's hammered, you could probably just put it back in. 
but you don't want to hit this bolt and then it go through the f tank and then coat the whole car with yeah. it, you know? Yeah, that'd probably be bad. Repaint the interior real fast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I would, I would just take that out. And then I think, you know, just go up to probably right about there on either yeah. one. Just flatten whatever this little rib is. Right. But this area is... Tools you need for an LS1 swap. Really big hammer. That's about it. The time has come. It is time to put this in its home. I can hear you already. Midnight sheets by Tatumi. So something that we've noticed, uh, which is kind of one of those trial and error things that you don't know until you do the thing, is that the shifter uh, doesn't actually fit in the hole for the shifter in the trans tunnel, so that needs to be modified. That's how you do that. Yeah, Make sure you have a fire extinguisher. That was the least pretty way that could have been done. Uh, but that was cleared out four inches just now. Ladies. Oh. Uh, mm, girl. So, uh, another thing that apparently I learned uh, that was in the instruction manual for the Collins CD swap is uh, these that Galen is operating on. Uh, this, those, those, those need to be removed. Apparently I didn't read the instructions too well. I'll show you on this because we have extras. It's these and this. Those are supposed to be surgically removed, which I did not because despite the fact I have a degree in English literature, apparently I can't f***ing read, so. <laughs> instructions. I, I, did, I did look at them briefly. <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna fit in there. It's just, this is as awkward as it gets. We're going to use some WD-40 silicone lubricant, which is not a product drop at all. <laughs> Somebody sponsor us, we're real good at this. <laughs> we should be like, WD-40, because we suck at everything. <laughs> So now that we've done that, we'll clean it off. See, that's right there. I'm not, not going to touch it, obviously, because it's very hot. But uh, that's what it's that's what it's supposed to look like. My bad. So it's uh, day two of actually trying to fit the motor into the car. Uh, we ran into a couple of problems last night. Um, the oil pan uh, was clearanced the exact amount um, that it needed to be. We cut a notch into the oil pan because uh, we were using a GTO pan. We like them better because the, uh, the oil lines, instead of having to run a uh, external uh, oil filter relocation kit and having that you know expose the elements that's actually run inside the pan. So we like that, so we used the GTO pan. We had to modify it a little bit, but um, the modification 
literally the thickness of the bead of the weld is what uh, we're you know touching the uh, front subframe by so what we're going to do is pull the motor out whether it has to go all the way back out or we can just kind of lift it up remains to be seen but we're going to cut out you know we're going to notch the front subframe uh, and get that taken care of. There's a couple of little odds and ends that we need to uh, button up and then we'll put it back in the car and that'll be its home forever, forever. Surgically remove the leading edge of the front subframe with an angle grinder. Switching to flat disc. Grind all sharp edges smooth to prepare for welding. This thing's 100% on fire inside the subframe, by the way. Pour corn in that hole. Right. Didn't put it out. No? No, not yet. Still not out. Really? Now it's out. It is genuinely so dirty, the front subframe from RB Life that it's like actually we had to put it out. It was on fire. Like, and it doesn't weld good either. It's so dirty. Well, whatever. Remove the steering shaft from its knuckle. The steering shaft will get looped through the driver's side headers. This may require some persuasion. Right now, the uh, LM7 is leaning back 2.8 degrees, uh, which is close. We want it to be between three and five degrees. We're gonna go for three. Uh, so we're almost there, but we're basically gonna have to determine that when we build the transmission mount, because that's what will determine its uh, final like pinion angle, I guess is what that would be. Um, I, 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 two. So that's, that's actually a reasonable, uh, so what we're doing right now is another thing that we didn't film back in August when we started doing this. Um, huh? We didn't notice that. Yeah. Um, when we were taking the uh, exhaust manifolds off, the headers, um, we broke, we, I, broke two of the studs and now we have to weld nuts to them to get them out. Um, a lot of dudes, like, we don't like fuck around with easy outs because we have 18 welders here. Um, a real good way to get the stud out of the head is to weld a nut to it and then back the nut out. And honestly, it works better than any easy out or any kind of chemical thing because the welder just applies so much heat to the stud, it just basically breaks free. I mean, it makes it white hot. Um, and then you can just back it out with a nut. All right. That red hot heat is why this is honestly the best way to get the head studs out. It just makes it so, so hot. Doesn't feel good, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but so basically what you're looking at here is the broken stud, the bubble that was welded on there, and then the nut that was welded onto that. 
Awesome. And all of these are untouchable with human hands. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> I'm going to like that very much. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, but you see, basically what we did was we took a stub and we made it into a bolt. Like, that's what happened. Hold it. It's really hard to get the torch in here, it's kind of a problem. Which is why I thought this might be difficult. Torch the torch angle. Got ourselves kind of a hot tamale right there. <laughs> it's like still red hot. Um, <laughs> now there are mixed thoughts about this. Some people say rip it out while it's still red hot. Some people say while it's red hot, it's it's too soft. It'll break, so wait till it's cool to rip it out. I've done it both ways. It always works either way, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> 100% success rate either way, so yeah. do with this information but as you But now that I've said that, that's a complete jinx, and this one will break no matter what we do, so. Let's go. Ooh, that one's in there. Yep, I snapped the head off. The jinx. It has occurred. Now, that is literally the first time one's ever broken. What size is that one? Alright. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where's the rainbow color thing? This is people shit on Harbor Freight Tools all day long, but this is the greatest invention on earth. This rainbow colored socket set. I literally, it's like you don't even have to, I'm colorblind, no, no red is 14. <laughs> Can't tell. I think I'm just breaking it again. Yep. We've got ourselves a toughie. All the, all the nuts are permanent. It's all permanent. Huh. On this episode of Function Beast, we lie about how easy stuff is, and we fix it in editing. Eight times the charm for me. What size is that? It's taking bets. Taking bets. Taking bets. Taking bets. Taking bets. Ah, uh, price is right rules. Ooh, price is price is right rules on socket size. Uh, I'm gonna go. 15. Oh, damn it, I was gonna go 15. 16, I guess. I'm trying 15 first, that says what I'm Yeah, that shit's a 15. Oh! Jesse won because he guessed first on Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's how it works on press, right? <laughs> Just twisted it right off. It's so tight that I can't even get it off my hand. I have to use another plier. We've well, figured out the solution, which is just put, instead of welding nuts to the stud, you just use vice grips on on the bead of weld. That has that has solved the problem. Ow, that was a finger. <laughs>